In this episode of Retro Gaming Night, we put a bird in a backpack and play Banjo Kazooie. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming Night. My name is Mark, and today we're looking at Banjo and Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. So Banjo and Kazooie is created by Rare. Um, they were a Nintendo second party at the time. Basically, Rare uh, started living up to the reputation of copying Nintendo ideas but making them bigger and better. And Banjo and Kazooie is Rare's answer to Mario 64. But before we get into that, we're just going to have a quick listen to this intro sequence because it's just, just filled with so much joy and humor in there. So the game, like Mario, is a 3D platform. This is Rare's take on it. Uh, the story is basically Banjo and Kazooie are friends. Uh, Kazooie is a bird that lives in the backpack with Banjo. Um, Grunty is a witch, and she is an ugly, horrible witch, as in most fairy tales. Uh, but Banjo has a sister who is extremely pretty, and the witch's plan is to take Banjo's sister and use. Um, her magic powers to take her prettiness and turn herself into a pretty witch. Uh, obviously, Banjo's not going to let that happen, so after his sister has been kidnapped, he goes out there to rescue her back. Uh, that's the general gist of the story, so it's sort of fairy tale themed, um, but it doesn't really focus on that too much. So, the game, like Mario, follows it in a lot of ways bigger and better though. So, the uh, Princess Peach Castle in Mario 64 is replaced by Grunty's Lair, which is absolutely huge and just filled full of enemies and obstacles. Um, so, as you play through it, you have to find the level. Instead of just entering a painting, you actually have to go and find the level itself, which is hidden away. Uh, instead of collecting stars, you now collect jiggies, which are jigsaw pieces, to fill up a painting, which is very similar to Mario. Um, but actually, you enter the level in a different area totally. So as you can see right now, we are going around Grunt's Slayer, and as I said, it's absolutely huge. Um, the music in it is just wonderful as well. Uh, in Rare worked really well on the music here, so instead of having one track, you have um, one sort of musical score which changes depending on the area you're in. So as soon as you go underwater, the music uh, instruments change to be an underwater thing. If you go to a snowy area, uh, you get sort of a Christmassy vibe to it. Go to Egyptian, all the instruments again change. Uh, this is only possible because the N64 cartridge technology, and it's absolutely wonderful to hear the, the way the music changes depending on your surroundings and situation. Uh, so, we're going to go into this first level here, which is Treasure Trove Cove. Um, this is the second or third level in the game, but it's probably one of the best and one of the most iconic. It is absolutely huge though. Uh, Mario 64, if you thought that was big, Banyu Kazooie, each level is probably five times the size of that. Um, I said Rare really did make everything bigger and better in this game. Graphically, it looks totally different to Mario 64. It's filled with textures, filled with even more colour, more detail, even more enemies. Um, Rare really have gone out of their way here to, to make this a feature packed game. Uh, this is also probably Rare's first instance of uh, starting their collector farm uh, dreams, as it were. Um, so, basically, in this game, you have the Jiggies to collect, you have notes to collect, which are equivalent to Mario's uh, coins. Um, you have feathers to and eggs and all sorts of extras to collect in this game. Um, most of them are not needed, uh, so like the eggs they help you with certain moves and stuff, but some of them like the notes and the jiggies are definitely required. Um, unlike Mario though, you do not select a star and play for that star. When you enter a level you can collect any jiggy that you want anytime assuming that you've got the moves to do it. Um, so there we went to a boss, so you can battle him, if you defeat him you collect a Jiggy. Um, there are other Jiggies hidden around the level and there's other uh, quests to do to, to get them. Uh, so as mentioned, the, there is a uh, different uh, moves that you can use. Now you, not all the moves are unlocked right away, you have to earn them in different levels by doing different things. And then you have to come back to some levels to reuse them and then you can get Jiggies you couldn't get previously. Uh, as I keep saying, Rare tries to be bigger and better than Mario 64 in every way, so obviously there's flying in this game. 
Um, instead of having a limited amount of flying that you can fly for as long as you want, as long as you've got the feathers to do it. You can fly all around the levels. Uh, you can't fly any time you want, you have to find a pad, but most levels have pads in them that allow, that allow you to fly around. Uh, this is where also Ray got fascinated with googly eyes on their monsters. They would take an object, put googly eyes on, job done. Um, in this game it works really well, it's very cute, very stylized. Um, but yeah, and it's definitely a unique trait to, to Rare and the Banjo Kazooie series. So the shark here, just very quickly, uh, as we try to as I try to fit everything in here. Um, basically, Rare wanted to do a thing called stop and swap for Banjo and Kazooie 2. Uh, it's basically you would have areas in this game you couldn't access, you could see them, such as the islands in the distance there, uh, but you could not access them in this game. When you got Banjo and Kazooie 2, you could then access them in the first game by taking out Banjo and Kazooie 2 while the N64 is still on, putting the first game in, and it would figure out that you've just played Banjo and Kazooie 2, and it would unlock these features, giving you access to certain other things, and so on. Uh, Nintendo had to request Rare to remove this feature from the second game, so the first game never got unlocked. Uh, but this did get put into the Xbox Live Arcade versions. So, if you want to play this game, you can play it on the N64, which is definitely a good way to play it. Or you have the Xbox Live Arcade versions, where the graphics are very similar, they are high resolution, um, they have fixed a few issues. The, this game gets notoriously difficult towards the end, um, such as to get certain jiggies you have to collect every note throughout the stage. Uh, on the N64 version, if you die or you restart the level, they all reset, and some of them are very difficult to get to. Uh, while in the Xbox Live Arcade version, once you've collected them, they're collected forever, making it a little bit easier. Uh, but, like I said, they put the stop and swap feature back in, so if you buy both games on the Xbox Live Arcade, you can do the stop and swap feature and access little uh, features from the first game as well. Uh, so, Banjo Kazooie, as a 3D platformer, it is not the best game in the world, unlike Mario 64. It's probably one of the second best platformers ever made, though, um, in the 3D genre. Uh, it is filled with absolutely tons of content, tons of levels, you're going to be playing this for about 20 to 25 hours at least to complete everything. Uh, it's filled with humour. Um, there is a few cutscenes in this. All the characters talk, there is no voice acting but a cute gibberish voice going on. Um, and it all works brilliantly. Uh, Rare really, you know, they thought about everything when making this game. Um, there are some issues. The controls are not as perfect as Mario 64. They are a bit fiddly at times and there's a lot of moves um, that are only used a few times in the game. The camera is not as good as Mario 64. It's perfectly usable, um, but it does have issues of getting stuck and not being as controllable. Um, but some of the levels in this just destroy Mario 64 in how fun they are. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you one of the best ones here, which is the Christmas themed snowy level. Um, just the music is a joy to listen to. Uh, Rare really works well on all the sound effects. Um, you know, they did a fantastic job on here. So, if you've never played a Bandicoot Zoo before, start with the first one, that is definitely the best one. Uh, the second goes even bigger and tries to be better than the first, but maybe fails because of the larger scope. Banjo and Kazooie Nuts and Bolts certainly has its fans, but it is not a Banjo and Kazooie game. Um, definitely get the first one on the N64 if you can, or on Xbox Live Arcade, and you'll have a fantastic time of 3D platforming fun. Uh, this was when Rare were at their peak of gaming. Uh, so hopefully you like that video. Go and give the game a try. Write your comments down below the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, until next time, stay casually hardcore. Did you enjoy that video? Then hit that like button. Why not subscribe as well and get the latest videos, news and competitions? Don't forget to check out casuallyhardcore.com where you can buy hundreds of video game shirts and geek clothing or make your own shirts with worldwide shipping also available. Until next time, stay casually hardcore.